Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some Maya tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at searching the outliner using wildcards, undo camera movements in the viewport with a hotkey, and how to use the built-in renaming tool and transform tool, which can be really helpful. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing to check out is going to be the searching of the outliner uh, using wildcards and just searching there in general. Uh, so basically, I've got a little scene here that I've been working on um, level for a, a mod map that I was doing. And I wanted to store all of my assets in a single scene. I didn't want to break up the props into another scene, basically just to save time. I'm the only artist working on this scene, so there wasn't really any value in creating like a big uh, folder structure or anything like that. But after a while, the outliner got pretty messy, pretty like overwhelming. And sometimes I would hide some stuff and then I couldn't remember what the name was later and I'd want to find it. And they've got a search feature in the outliner, which is right here. And this has been broken basically my whole career. Like I've been using Maya since version two, I think. And I just recently found out that this thing started working. The searches would never work properly before. So if you've been using Maya for a long time like me, and you've just abandoned using this thing. It is awesome now. In Maya 2018, 2017, I think is when they fixed it, and it's great. So I've got a lot of things with the name uh, water in this scene. A bunch of stuff, like see, I've got a bunch of like props and stuff going on here, and I've I've just got a bunch of stuff. So basically, what you can do is you can just go into the outliner and you can just type water, and it's going to automatically just show you all of the stuff that has water in the name, which is great. But even better than that, I can use uh, what's called a wild card, which is like the star symbol on the keyboard or the uh, asterisk or whatever. And what that does is basically you can substitute a word, anything after the word or before the word, and it will still find the thing in the outliner for you. So for example, I've got water typed in, so it's going to find any object in the scene that has water in the name, but um, you can just click here to remove the search or whatever. But um, what if I wanted to just type W? So I hit W and I hit enter, and I do get some W names, but I also get some other random stuff. See, I'm getting level block out, I'm getting sign arrow, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So if you add the star icon here, watch what happens, I'm going to add the star and I'll hit enter. And then it searches everything. It's going to go W and then anything past W. So it's going to filter out all those other kind of useless things. So let's go like W E. And then we just get the wedge. I guess I only have one thing in the scene called wedge. So you can use this to search even quicker and filter out um, other junk that you might not want to see in there. On top of that, you can reset with this button here, as we just showed. And then there's a little drop down here. And this is all your previous searches. So we can go like what, whatever. And then we had like water. Um, just a quick way to get back to your previous searches there. And then you can also favorite them there with the star. So you can save those searches for later if you're always kind of searching a complex scene for something. Maybe you always want to search for high poly and see it to show it uh, for your normal map bake or something like that. And of course, you can also use a wild card and then a name and then a wild card. So if I wanted to search for everything that has 0, 1, B in the name or anything that comes after it, I can go star 0, 1, B star and hit enter. And then I'm going to get anything that has 0, 1, B in the name and basically anything that comes before it and after it, it's going to find those corresponding objects in the scene. So super helpful. Saved me a lot of time while working on the scene because then I can quickly just select this guy, show it, and then go down here and uh, isolate selection and then just start working on my prop. Okay, next up, we've got the undo camera movements. This one is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a secret, but it's also a total lifesaver because I don't know how many times you guys have done this, but I might line up the camera, like let's say here, and I'm working on something and I don't want to move the camera. I didn't lock it or anything. And then I've accidentally just slightly rotated it or I've hit F for something like that. And then I've lost, I'm just like, oh man, like where am I in my scene now? And so basically what you can do is you can just tap the bracket keys on the keyboard. The left bracket will undo to the previous camera and the right bracket will redo 
to the camera movement you just went through. And then they'll cycle. I think there's like five or six undos or something in here. So you can see I'm going back all the way to, actually there's way more than six, going back all the way to like the camera movements that I made like way early on or whatever. And then if you tap the right bracket, you can redo those camera movements. So we'll just go back to here. And then I accidentally pressed F and boom, I lost everything on screen. But don't worry, you don't have to like manually fly back or like, you know, scroll through like a million times or whatever to get back to where you were. Just tap the left bracket key on the keyboard, boom, and you're all good back to where you were. And finally, we've got the rename multiple objects tool that is built into Maya. And this is kind of a weird one. It's totally kind of a secret thing because if you go up here to this transform input and you click this weird button, there's actually a renaming tool built into this tool. So even like getting to the tool, it's not even visible by default. So we'll talk about the transform tool because that's also really helpful and it's in the same menu in a second. But first let's look at the renaming tool. So you just click here to activate the renaming tool and it's pretty straightforward. I know there's a lot of like custom renaming tools out there, lots of scripts to do this, but if you're in a jam and you don't have one of those scripts, you can just use this thing, it's built right in. So here, I'm just gonna select a couple of these guys and actually here, let's get uh, these guys down the bottom here, get them in order so you can see what we're doing. So I've just got a bunch of cubes selected there and uh, you just uh, type whatever name you want in here. So let's just go YouTube and then hit enter and boom, it renames all these guys to YouTube. Now, the thing that's really always bugged me about Maya is when you rename multiple stuff, this one doesn't start at one. So it can be hard to count because it's zero based. I find that super annoying and it doesn't put the zero there. So you get an inconsistent look. And what's more annoying is if you go to rename those guys again, YouTube, and you can do like a underscore zero zero and hit enter. And it looks like it's working. Everything's like kind of like working out good but it only works up to 10. As soon as you get into double digits, then it goes all wonky. So here, I'm just gonna rename these guys again. YouTube underscore zero, zero, gonna be awesome, right? No, after nine, it adds a zero in front, which doesn't make any sense. So then you still have this ugly, like inconsistent stack and it makes it hard to read in my opinion. And uh, it's still going to zero, zero, whatever. So um, it's kind of junk. But don't worry, there is a trick to get around this um, ugly auto naming stuff inside of Maya. And even if you use a four digit, like zero, 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 one, and hit enter, it still doesn't work. Now it adds another zero in front of that. So you start out with like a four digit, and then you end up with a five digit. And it's hideous. I hate it. So the trick to get around this is select all these guys. And what you want to do is you want to type your name and then you want to start at 1001. And this is like the only thing that works, I'm pretty sure. So 1001 and hit enter. And then see, look at this. We get everything named correctly. It's all four digits exactly. But you might notice they're not in the right order. So that's uh, super annoying. So basically, there's a way to get around that as well. I mean, you can uh, get like a sort by name script for the outliner. Uh, I'm going to be working on one of those in the future too. So hopefully that'll be included in the script pack later. But basically what you want to do is, for whatever reason in Maya, if you name something the same name underscore 1001 like more than one time it like starts appending the number and doing weird things so the second trick is to change the first name temporarily so we'll go test 1001 boom there we go perfect look everything's names test and it starts at one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all the way down to 28 and you can count them they're in order and they don't change widths and add another zero or another number to the back side or whatever so this is how I like to name my stuff. It's clean and you can count them. You can be like, oh, one, 28. Okay, I have 28 objects uh, currently in the scene right here. And then of course, if you do not like that name because we never wanted it to call it test, we wanted it to call it YouTube, you just, whoops, tube, you just uh, rename it one more time. And boom, there we go. See, YouTube 1001 to 1028. So. That can be super handy if you're in a jam and you just want to rename some stuff quickly in your scene.
Okay, and let's also look at that other tool that was in here. So get out of the naming tool. I don't know why they combine these. It's super weird. So you get out of the naming tool, and we've also got this absolute transform and relative transform. And these are both useful in certain situations. So we'll start with the absolute transform. So just click that on. So what absolute transform does is it's going to take whatever values you put in the X, Y, Z, and it's going to move your object based on its pivot point no matter what transform is in here, it's gonna move it where you tell it to move exactly. So if it's offset by four and you say, I want it to go to zero, it's gonna go to zero. It's not gonna go to like minus four or whatever. It's not gonna be additive transform. So uh, basically, let's say I want this to go to zero on Y, you just type zero and you hit enter and boom, it's at zero on Y. And you can see the transform's all messed up because this thing like overrides it and makes it go exactly where you want it. So if you want to go zero, 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 boom, it's at zero, zero, zero. And like that can be super helpful for certain things. Like uh, it works on components as well. So sometimes you're in a big scene or a messy scene or you have so many verts selected or something like that and you just want to get some component to zero, this can be really helpful. You just select those guys and it doesn't matter like where they are anywhere. And uh, then along Z, we're gonna go zero and boom, it's gonna be perfectly like on the grid. Same thing with the other thing there. You can go along the top one and go zero and snap that up. So that can be handy again in certain situations. And it can also be helpful actually in the UV editor as well so you can it works the same in the uv editor select some uvs and then we're going to go zero along x and boom there you're zeroed out perfectly so that one's kind of cool i use that sometimes but what is even better than that is actually the relative transform so we'll go up here again and we'll switch it to relative transform and i'm just going to quickly delete some of this stuff here just so we have a plane and uh, i'm going to freeze and center the transform there so i don't e actually even have any transform going on there and so scale that guy up a little bit. So I was working on something actually in that other scene that we were looking at, and I needed to stack a couple like uh, quads like this, basically on top of themselves, but I needed them to be an exact amount starting at the bottom one. And let's pretend the bottom one, I'm just gonna freeze a transform. The bottom one has no transforms. So like, Basically, I wanted to offset this one exactly like, I don't know, like, let's say like four uh, units upward. And then this guy, you know, go like four units upward on top of that. So what's cool about the relative one is it takes where the pivot point is and it just adds four to whatever that is. So what you do is you freeze the transform on all of these guys. So we have none. And then you take the pivot and move it to wherever, like snap it all to the same place. So you've got them all sitting on top of each other. And then select one. And then you go four along Y, let's say. And it moves it exactly four. And then we know that four for this guy is going to be exactly the same spot. So we would go to eight. Or you could go four and then go another four like that. And so you can kind of keep offsetting them and get an exact measurement. So this can be super handy, especially in like a big scene like I was working on because there was just so much wireframe and stuff on the screen. And I actually needed them to be really precise. So I'm just going to undo that and snap them back down. I was actually working with a very minute value. I think I was working at like 0.1. Yeah, so it was even hard to even select anything. Like, look how small of a value that was. Might have even been 0 0.1. And so we can go with this guy. We can go 0 0.1. And then we can go 0 0.1 again. Or instead of doing that, we could have just gone straight to 0 0.2. Because it's all relative from where the pivot is. It will add a 0.2 to whatever you're doing. So that was uh, super helpful for me. And I've used this technique many times before to do this exact stuff when you need an exact measurement of something to move it away from something else exactly. Thanks for watching everybody. Without viewers like you, this channel would not be possible. If you like this video, please purchase something from the online store.
Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have an excellent day.